morning. My name is Ashley Tezak. Whether you have joined us for our indoor services or you are worshiping with us online, we are glad you are here. As a church, we know the importance of being together and building friendships. We also believe that one of the best ways you can learn about Christianity, explore some of life's deep questions, and discover things about faith in Jesus is by being with other people asking the same questions. Alpha is a series of sessions that focuses on different questions around faith each week and is designed to create conversation. It's an opportunity to hear from others and contribute your own perspective in an honest and open environment. This year, Alpha will be held via Zoom starting September 10th at 7 p.m. We'll break up into small groups for discussion and we encourage anyone to join us. Another way you can find community is to be a part of a small group, which we call a Live Love Lead group. These groups are typically eight to 12 people who gather twice a month to encourage each other, build friendships, explore the word of God, and do life together. Twice a year, we have a starter Live Love Lead night. We invite anyone interested in a small group to join us on Sunday evening, August 30th at 6 p.m. in our back parking lot. You'll have a chance to get into a group and try a small group experience. If you are uncomfortable coming to the building, but would like, still like to be in a Live Love Lead group, you can register by finding the link in our Sunday Bulletin at hfcinfo.com. Our Sunday Bulletin also has a place for you to take your own sermon notes, submit a prayer request, and check out the latest announcements. If you are new today, I encourage you to fill out the Connect card in our Sunday Bulletin. Let us know you were here so we can help get you connected and answer questions you may have about the church. If you are here with us in person, stop by the hub in the lobby or online you can join us in our virtual lobby immediately following this service. We value relationships and would want to connect with you. This connect card and the virtual lobby links are in our Sunday Bulletin at hfcinfo.com. Lastly, we want to thank you for your continuing financial contribution to the ministry of Hershey Free Church. We know these times are unique and difficult, and we want to partner together. Reminder, you can give online at hfcinfo.com. You can also drop a check off at the church office, or if you are with us in person, at the boxes by the doors as you leave the sanctuary. Again, thanks for being with us today. Good morning. It's great to be with you. Let's focus our hearts, our minds, and our bodies to worship our God this morning. Psalm 89, verses 1 through 4 read, I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant David. I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. Praise the Lord. Let's praise his name together.
Now your mercy, now your mercy has saved my soul. Now your freedom is all that I know. The old made new, Jesus, when I met you, you called my name. I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day I needed rescue. I needed rescue. My sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter. I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open Cause when you called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You called my name Feel the world is broken, we do. Do you feel the shadows deepen, we do. But do you know that all the dark will stop the light from getting through, we do. Do you wish that you could see it all made? It's all creation groaning It is It's a new creation coming It is It's the glory of the Lord To be the light within our midst It is good that we remind ourselves of this it is is anyone worthy is anyone whole is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll the lion of Judah Conquered the grave. He is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. Is he worthy? Is he worthy of all blessing, honor, and glory? Is he worthy of? The 
Father truly love us? He does. Does the Spirit move among us? He does. And is Jesus our Messiah? Forever those He loves, He does. Does our God and twin to dwell again with us? He does. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave. He is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave from every people and tribe, every nation and tongue. He has made us a kingdom and priest to God to reign with the Son. Is He worthy? Is he worthy of all blessing and honor and glory? Is he worthy? Is he worthy? Is he worthy of this? He is. song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe and we live for you Jesus the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, and we live for you. We live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes. Jesus the name Jesus the name above every other name Jesus the only one who could ever say worthy of every breath we could ever breathe and we live for you we live for you
I will build my life. And I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. And I will put my trust in you. Good morning again, Hershey Free. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Nick Mantum. I'm one of the pastors on staff here, and I'm so excited to be able to continue in our series called Renew, which we are looking at various psalms and understanding what it means to renew our entire being. And just a couple of quick reminders for you. We have this really cool devotional guide and study question guide for you online at hfcinfo.com. It's an awesome opportunity for you to dig deeper into God's Word by walking through a devotional this week and also provide some really good questions for you as an individual, as a small group, and as family. So I would encourage you to head over to hfcinfo.com and check that out. I also want to encourage you to go over to hfcinfo.com because you can find all of our sermon notes there as well. You can find them, you can put your own notes in and download it and save it. Uh, You can submit a prayer request, find out latest announcements, and a ton of other stuff. So head over to hfcinfo.com, and you'll be able to get all that information there. But like I said, last week, Pastor George started us off on a brand new series called Renew. We were looking at various psalms and saying, okay, what does it mean to actually renew myself? What does this look like in my life? And this week, we are going to be tackling one of the most well-known psalms in existence, Psalm 23. And so before we get started, let me take a really, really formal, highly doctoral study of who has at some point heard of Psalm 23. Okay, just raise your hand. You know, I can see like through the magic of of television and internet. I know if you're doing it. Okay, how about who has at some point memorized all or part of Psalm 23? And because I know this is super scientific and it's all data-driven and I've gotten all the information really quickly, I know that the majority of us probably raised our hand in some capacity. It is the most memorized, most well-known psalm out of the entire book of the Bible. And the crazy thing is, is that we sometimes when we, we know something so well, we, we often just kind of recite it out of memory. We don't really dig deep into what the text is saying. And so this morning, what I want to do is I actually want to tackle each verse of this passage and say, okay, what do we actually learn from it? What do we actually hear from this passage? And then what I want to do is say, okay, so we know what this passage is saying. How do we actually renew our soul? So let's take a look at this passage then together. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest of valleys, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is a beautiful and exceptionally powerful psalm. And what we need to understand is this psalm is written by King David. 
And King David is giving us this analogy of a shepherd as he talks about God. And it's not that David is just kind of like pulling an analogy out of thin air. That's not what he's doing. David has intimate knowledge about being a shepherd because that was his career before he was a king. David has this this understanding of what a shepherd truly does about his role of caring for, guiding, protecting, and, and ministering to the flock. And so David brings this intimate knowledge and he attaches it to God. But the other cool thing about shepherding is in the Bible, shepherding is actually used to describe kings as well. Because a good king, a king who loves his people, will act like a shepherd to them. They will care for, they will provide for, they will watch over and protect their people. And so David, as he's writing this, he's using this analogy specifically to help us understand who God is and what he is doing in our lives to care for us. And and I think David's point in this psalm is to help us understand that, that as the world can look like it's caving in around us, we can still find renewal and hope and peace in the good shepherd. So let's take a look at this psalm real quick, and we'll look at these verses individually. So Psalm 23, beginning in verse 1, it says, The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Now, I don't believe that David is literally saying he, he has everything. Because arguably, if you, if you study the life of King David, uh, David was really lacking in some areas, like impulse control. Um, David did not have good impulse control. Um, David also struggled with coveting other people, like other people's wives. Just saying, like, my man struggled. David also had family issues. I mean, anybody else can testify to that right now. I mean, David's family, his son tried to kill him and took over the kingdom. I mean, David did not have everything. So I don't think that's what he's saying here. Because in in all actuality, that's not true. God does not just go, here's everything your heart desires, you have it. He goes, no, but I will provide for you. And so what I believe David is actually saying here is this, is that God is ever present and always caring for us. God is always present. If you look at this, he says, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. Because God is always with him. He is always caring for us. And it may not be in the way that we want or in the moment that we desire it, but God is always, always watching out and caring for us. But then as he continues in the verse two, he talks about this beautiful picture. He says, God makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. And this is a beautiful picture. I just, like in my mind, I picture like this beautiful meadow with this amazing little stream just running by and I'm laying down in this meadow. I'm hearing the soft babbling of this stream. But you know, it's like, it's not that overwhelming like loudness. It's just that still kind of soft babbling that, you know, that makes you just want to take a nap. And it's perfect temperature out, right? There's a couple of those beautiful puffy clouds in the sky, but the sun is shining against this crystal blue sky. And then as you look around the meadow, it's, it, it's rimmed by this beautiful, beautiful forest. And of course, there's no bugs, no snakes, and no allergies, right? That's the picture David's painting for us. He's like, this is what God does. He leads you beside quiet waters. He makes you lie down in green pastures. And what David is wanting us to understand is this, is that when we walk with Jesus, he provides us with nourishment and restoration. This image is the nourishment is being in the water and being in the grass, and the restoration is just being filled with renewal. And that's what God does for us. When when David pens this psalm, he's like, look, you need to understand there are times when we just need to be restored and nourished. And God provides that. He brings us to this place where he goes, here, just rest in me. Let me renew you. Come, be still and be present with me. And so David wants us to understand that when we walk with Jesus, that's where we find our provision and our nourishment and restoration. But then as we continue in the psalm in verse 3, David also says, God refreshes my soul. He guides me along right paths for his namesake. And what we need to understand is David is saying, God provides good guidance for us. And, and some of you here today may go, you know what, Nick, that's, that's a great thing, but you know, it sure doesn't feel like God is guiding me right now. My life feels like a wreck, Nick. Like, I feel like everything is changing all the time. It's crazy. And, and, and like, I don't even know what to do half the time. Like, how can we say that God provides good guidance for us? Well, I think sometimes, folks, what we need to realize is that a lot of times the guidance we are seeking is guidance for ourselves, not guidance from God. Because if we read that verse again, the last few words in that verse, he says, he refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. 
for God's name. That is where he's guiding us. And so oftentimes I think we get frustrated because we're not going down the path that we want. We're not going the way that I desire. We are not doing the things that I want to do. And God goes, hang on. Isn't my way better? Isn't my way the right way? And so what David is saying, he's like, look, we need to remember. We need to remember that God provides good guidance for us. That God is guiding us. I mean, this imagery of sheep and shepherd is there for a reason because sometimes sheep, we are stubborn and we only see one direction and God's going, that's not the right direction. I'm gonna guide you back over here. Come with me, get on the right path. I know where I'm going. I'm alpha and omega. I've seen time from beginning to end. I know how to get you to the right place. And so what we need to realize is David is penning this psalm saying, listen, stop trying to do it your way and understand that God provides good guidance for you that he cares about you, that he loves you, and he wants to walk with you. And then David, in verse four, takes us into, I think, an area that many of us can relate to. He writes, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I won't fear. For you, God, are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And I believe what David is saying here is this, is that God sustains and protects us in all moments. And can I just be real with you for a moment? Like, not that I wasn't real before, but just like real and authentic right now. Like, just being honest, Nick. The past few months, there have been a lot of valleys, haven't there? There's been a lot of moments when we we don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. A lot of doubt, a lot of fear, a lot of questions. And when we sit there and we're like, I, I get this, Nick. I get that valley. I'm in it. Or maybe maybe you're like, I know I'm coming up on a valley. I can sense it. Or maybe you just got out of the valley. We can all relate to that. We know what it's like to be in the valley. But here's the thing that David is saying. He's like, God sustains and protects in all moments, especially in those dark ones. And when we read that text, what I love is he says, even though I'm walking in the darkest valley, I won't fear because God is with me. And here's the thing. He expounds on this. He doesn't just go, hey, you know, God's with you. Be happy even when life is crappy. That's not what he says, okay? He says, no, God is with me. And in fact, he has a rod and a staff. He defaults back to the imagery of a shepherd. And he goes, the rod and the staff, which were implements for the shepherd to guide the sheep, to keep them on the right path. And the other one was a resource to fend off predators that would try to hurt and harm the sheep. And so he goes, even in those darkest of places, God is with me, walking with me, guiding me, carrying me, protecting me. And he goes, that comforts me. Folks, it is so easy to get overwhelmed these days. And I think much like sheep, we can get overwhelmed because we have a singular vision. We only see the problem. We only see the valley. And we miss the shepherd. We miss the fact that our shepherd is with us, that he's never left us, that he's walking with us, that his rod and his staff he's using to guide us, to get us out of the valley, and he's using the other to protect us from everything that seeks to destroy us. But we often just become so enveloped in the immediate problem, and we focus on the problem rather than the solution. I think what David is is hearkening us to here in verse four. He's like, don't look at the problem. Look at the Savior. Don't just look at the valley. See the good shepherd. Know that he is guiding you. He is protecting you. And he's moving you through those moments. And then in verse five, I love this because he carries his theme on even more. He goes, and check this out. He goes, and you, God, prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. And God, you anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. It's this beautiful imagery. I always default to like a Thanksgiving table with all the food out there. And there's so much food. You're like, we can't eat this all, but we're like, it's just so plentiful. And you're excited, like the turkey, the rolls, the corn, the potatoes, the pies, right? They're all there. And David's like, God prepares this amazing table for me. And he does it in the presence of my enemies. And what David is saying is this, is that God's justice and provision will always prevail. God will always provide for you, even in those dark valleys. When you're surrounded by your enemies, the good shepherd who is guiding and protecting you is providing for you. He will never leave you hanging. He will never leave you alone. But he is also just. And it's so beautiful that God, in the presence of his enemies, prepares his table for David. Because he's saying, look, when everybody thinks that they have you, 
When this world threatens to overwhelm you, I am putting my foot down saying, not today because I am God. I have control. I am Alpha Omega. I have set this world in motion, not anything else. And because of that, God's justice will come to fruition. The wrongs will be righted. The, 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 the ostracized will be lifted up. The broken will be elevated. Wrongs will be made right. The good shepherd does not leave his sheep to fend for themselves, but rather fights for them and protects them and allows for them to prevail. And then we get to verse six, which is the promise of this passage. And I think this is specifically from David's worldview going, I understand like this is who God is, but listen to the promise. It's not just that he does all these things. His promise is this, that surely God's goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the Lord's house forever. What a beautiful promise. And David wants us to understand this. He wants us to understand that God is forever faithful. God is always faithful. Nothing can stop that. And he says, in fact, we have the promise of spending eternity with him. It's so beautiful. Your goodness and love. He uses these words specifically because they are attributes of God. The very definition of goodness and love is God himself. And so he's saying, look, not that everything will be unicorns and rainbows, but that God will be with him every day. And I would argue that God is a lot better than unicorns and rainbows. As awesome as they are, God is better. God is greater. And he says, God will forever be with me. If I follow him, if I rest in him, if I allow for him to renew my soul, God is with me every day, caring for me, providing for me, sustaining me, protecting me. And then when everything else fails, God has prepared a place for me in eternity to be with him. What a beautiful promise. Folks, we don't go through this life alone. We were never designed to live in isolation. We were never designed to try to do it on our own. And David is penning this psalm saying, do you understand the greatness of your shepherd? I don't know if you're like me, but desperately this season, I need my soul renewed. Desperately, I, I've, I've just felt that longing to, to have my soul just cleansed and righted before God. As the frustrations have mounted, the frustrations have turned to bitterness. As you scroll through social media and you feel overwhelmed by all the different things that are there that, that just distort your spirit. Have you felt that way too? Have you felt like you just need to be refreshed and renewed? I think from this psalm then, I think there are a few ways that we can do that. I think there, there are a couple ways that we can, we can implement to renew our soul. And I would suggest that the way that we do that is through four simple words. Four words. Rest, rely, remember, believe. And for those of you who are wordsmiths, I tried to get the alliteration, and I'm sorry. I couldn't come up with a, a word for believe that started with R. And if you want to text me, send me an email and let me know, I will make sure to include that in future messages. So thank you for that ahead of time. But here's the thing. I think if we look at this, we say, yes, Jesus, I want to be renewed. My soul is longing for this. How do I do this? I think these four words help us to do that. First, we need to rest in all seasons. Let me ask you something. In the past few months, you've been sleeping well? Have you had some restless nights? Have you felt more tired than normal? Have you felt like your schedule's way out of whack? Have you felt like you're just not being refreshed? Let me encourage you to take a nap, to actually get some good rest. It's funny, when you read through scripture, um, God actually tells multiple people to go take a nap and then eat a snack. And I love them snacks, you know? I love going home after a Sunday morning, eating lunch, then having second lunch, you know, which is just the, the snack portion of, sec of lunch, right? And then after that, just passing out on the couch. And you can ask Elise, it's like, it's like she's got it down to a clockwork, right? It's like I come home, eat lunch, have a snack, boom, out on the couch. Naps are a gift from God, amen? I'm just saying, that is true in scripture and I think it's true in our lives as well. But here's the thing, I don't think it's just physical rest. I think it's spiritual rest as well. We need to be resting physically, but also spiritually. Because if we are honest with ourselves this past season, our spiritual rhythms have been out of whack. 
And when we are out of whack in our relationship with Jesus Christ, we suffer and we feel depleted and exhausted. So let me encourage you to really work on reestablishing rhythms or come up with new ones. And maybe it, it could look different for each person. Maybe it's that you wake up early and you watch the sunrise as you read your Bible with a cup of coffee, right? Or maybe, maybe it's that you do family devotions together around the dinner table because now we're all together all the time, am I right? Or maybe it's this, maybe it's like what Pastor Bob referenced last week. And he said, you know, sometimes we are looking for that big voice from God and God speaking in a whisper. So maybe you just need to be silent and quiet in the presence of God. What is it for you that will help you to rest? But we also then need to rely. And we need to rely on God in all moments, but especially when the moments are uncertain, much like it is now. We don't know what each day holds. In fact, God tells us that in scripture. He goes, why worry about tomorrow? You don't know what tomorrow is going to hold. Each day has sufficient worry. Let God handle it. We need to rely upon him, not on ourselves. We need to trust that the shepherd, the good shepherd is truly good and that he cares for us and that the promises in this passage of protection, of sustainment, of provision will continue. Are you relying on God for renewal of your soul or are you relying upon yourself? Are you relying upon God or a political party? Are you relying upon God or social media? What are you looking to for your renewal? Because if it's not renewing you, I would argue it's not God. So where are you going? You have to rely upon God to renew your soul in all moments, good, bad, indifferent. From the mountains to the valleys and the plateaus in between, you must rely upon God. Also, you need to remember You have to remember God's sustainment and provision. Here's the thing. God was not caught off guard by our current reality. You see, God stands outside of time. He's Alpha and Omega. He was beginning and end. He created this. You know, the crazy thing is, like, we we get so caught up in our present reality, but God built reality. We shouldn't be getting caught up in everything present. We should be getting caught up in Jesus. Amen? Amen. God should be who we remember. God should be the person that we rely upon. And what we need to do is we need to look backwards, look back in time, look back at the church, at Israel, and how God has provided and sustained them. You know, if we look back in the book of Acts, this is crazy. Like the early church, I bet you they in a lot of ways felt like us when they were getting persecuted and pushed all around. But you know what? God did an amazing work through that. And what if this is God's way of doing an amazing work through the church again? What if, it, if God's going, look, maybe the church needs to be thinking more outside of the box and thinking about how can we minister in our context? How can we care for our people? How can we do things differently and reach more people? What if this is the next great awakening? What if God is using this for the church to be the church and to change the world? Because all of a sudden we're meeting with people one-on-one or in smaller groups and going, look at who Jesus is. Let me show you him by how I live and how I love you. What if, what if this is what God is doing? And as we look back at these stories, we remember how God has moved through, moved through good times and bad times, how he has provided and sustained his people. And I would encourage you to do that in your own life. Because perhaps you're like me and you've had some pretty dark valleys before. But you're here today. And God has brought you out of them. And you can remember that. And you can preach to yourself. You can cast that doubt out and be like, my God is faithful. My God provides. It wasn't easy, but my God got me through it. And then you can, you can say that to others and walk with them as they're going through similar circumstances. What if we remembered more? But then the last one is this, is believe. And see, the first three don't mean squat unless you got the last one. Because if you don't believe that the good shepherd is actually good, that his promises are true, that he remains, then the first three don't mean anything. Because you're just ending up resting and taking a nap. You're not relying upon God, you're relying upon self. And you're not remembering what God's done, you're remembering your problems. But what if instead you believed in who the shepherd is? That he loves you more than you could ever, ever comprehend. And what if that was the catalyst for the world to be changed? So my friends, church, may our souls be renewed, not by our present realities or digital media or anything else, May our souls be renewed by the good shepherd who leads us beside still waters, who provides for us and prepares a table in the presence of our enemies and gets us out of the valleys to rejoice with him 
on the mountains. Will you pray with me? Father God, we thank you so much. I thank you, God, that I, that I don't have to do this life on my own. I thank you that we have a shepherd who guides and loves and protects us, even when we are stubborn and ignorant. Father, I confess that there have been times this season where, where I have not relied upon you. I have not remembered what you've done, and I've allowed for myself to, to become frustrated and bitter. And Father, I ask that you cleanse my heart of that. Cleanse our hearts of that, Father. Renew us. Let us remember and believe and rely. And Father, rest in your your goodness, God. Let that be the definitive quality of who we are. For you are the good shepherd. And you care for us in ways that we can never fathom or understand. But thank you for all that you do. And we pray this in your name. Amen. Again, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us today. Just a reminder, online we have our weekly devotional guide for you. We'd love for you to jump in there, download that, use that as a resource to to go through this week, to have further, deeper questions surrounding the sermon and what we've talked about today. And also, if you are new or visiting with us today, we just want to say, hey, again, an extra special welcome to you. We would love for you to hop over to our virtual lobby. You can find all this along with the bulletin and other information at hfcinfo.com. And we would love just to connect with you and to say, hey, thanks for being here. We want to share a little bit more about who Hershey Free is. So church, know that we have a good shepherd who is looking to renew and restore our souls. May we find encouragement in that this week, and may we go and be the church that he has called us to. Have a great week, Hershey Free.